And welcome back to today's review of Cutie Honey, a 1973 anime series. And you may be asking yourself, why should you care about an anime series from the early 70s? Well, I'll tell you. Because Cutie Honey is about a female action hero who fights crime and does so with wacky comedy and very violent action. She kills folks, like in every episode, although they're robots, right? But anyway, uh, but very violent. Um, and she also has this thing where whenever she, so she has this ability to transform, kind of like a magical girl, but um, she's, she's a teenager. And whenever she transforms into a different outfit, a different costume, basically, her previous outfit completely shreds off of her. So she's nude for like a second between those uh, those outfits. So you can kind of get a sense for the intended audience for this, right? So it's, it's kind of that kind of a show. But let's get into some of the, the basic elements of what this thing is beyond those concepts of the, of, of the premise. Uh, it is by Go Nagai, who was famous for doing a lot of these kind of sexier, more violent concepts at the time. And it was originally meant to be more of a light action series with a female protagonist, but it got moved to a shonen time slot, and so they added violence and nudity to it, basically. But So Cutie is a teenage girl who lives at a convent, actually, or like a Catholic girls' school, and but she, like, she lives there. And then her father is murdered, and she goes and tries to find out what's going on, and it turns out there's a... A big conspiracy around this criminal organization that's trying to to uh, actually attack Honey and and get this thing from her. And she's actually an android. Why? Why not? Well, like, let's throw that in here. Um, so it's basically kind of a violent magical girl series with a liberated teenage protagonist. And the reason I'm using air quotes is because this is technically a magical girl series. It's not magic, it's actually supposed to be science. She has this thing inside her that transforms matter into energy. Or, um, it can create matter out of the air, because why not? And this is kind of the thing that the, the, the bad guys are going after. So there are transformation sequences. They're actually nude transformation sequences. Um, and she transforms into this fighting version of herself and goes and fights bad guys. So it follows the basic premise of a Magical Girl series. But the protagonist is this teenage girl who is a girl of the 70s. She has no problem wearing mini skirts and flirting with boys. So th there's this interesting tension where it's very much not a typical Magical Girl protagonist. Into this, into this thing. It's, it's multiple genres all colliding at once. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, animation because it is, you know, early 70s. And it is very early 70s in terms of the character designs, in terms of the art style. But it does have a very high animation budget by 70s standards. There's a lot of action in, in this, this thing. I was actually very surprised. A lot of action anime series will have a lot of padding in the episode before getting to the action. And there's a lot of, of action uh, you know, interspersed throughout the entire episode. Um, and there's a, a lot of movement. I mean, they don't really... They cut corners in typical anime ways, but not in ways that suggest that they don't have the budget for their animation. It also has this uh, stylized form of movement and, and animation in the sense that characters can, you know, leap onto the second story of a building. Uh, you know, they can... Uh, Cutie Honey dodges bullets at times just because she kind of sees where it should go. It's over the top. She kicks people without really having the leverage to do so, that kind of thing. But it's an action series and it's fun. It's not, it's not meant to be realistic, so that, that's, that's cool. I should also mention the color scheme here. You have this bizarre, kind of psychedelic color scheme with like purple trees and yellow mountains. Um, but somehow it all works. Like it, it feels, it's not just kind of random spots on things. Um, a lot of times it feels like when you're trying for a weird color scheme, you get just you know, almost somebody picking a random color, whereas these colors all feel like they are of a pattern. 
and so it, just, it kind of works in what in what it's doing. And also, wisely, they don't go crazy with character, you know, and costuming colors. So characters do not have you know bizarre purple suits and things along those lines. Uh, some of Honey's costumes are a little flamboyant, but they're you know in in definitely seventies style flamboyant. It doesn't feel ridiculous for ridiculous sake. And that art style actually makes the show kind of unique and and uh, and fun in that way. The overall direction and pacing is quite fast paced. And again, I was impressed at how quickly these stories move, how much action there is in the show. Now, because it's an action series, there's not a lot of plot. You know, when you're spending a lot of time showing people fighting, you can't really have too much other plot along with that. Um, and then also, there's this unfortunate tendency to intercut the action with goofy comedy. Now, this actually works better earlier in the show, where you have, you know, you'll have an occasional light moment to intercut between the, uh, the adventure of the episode. But there's a lot more comedy as the show progresses. And it turns into essentially half comedy, half action. And that's a lot for a lot of people to, to deal with. And I know I found it to be a little overwhelming at times. So just be aware. And it's, you know, it's very goofy, over-the-top comedy. It's pratfalls. It's uh, that kind of thing. And certainly not my kind of comedy. So just, just be aware. Um, it never, for me, got to a point where I hated it. But it definitely got old after a while, for lack of a better term. So let's move on to the characters. <clears throat> um, I always like to talk about, you know, are the characters realistic? Do they have realistic relationships? And no. This is a ridiculous concept uh, with ridiculous characters thrown together. It is very clear that Go Nagai created characters that would bounce off each other well, but wasn't really concerned with why they would hang out together, with, with, with why they would all fit together as a team. Now, they do end up doing that. But it is this ridiculous set of characters. It's basically Cutie, and uh, she ends up bumping into a young man who is instantly attracted to her, partly because she's undergoing a new transformation sequence at the time. And he's a reporter, which is convenient. He also has a preteen younger brother who ends up going on these adventures with them. And a, uh, he has a, a father, a living father, who is kind of the old... Uh, uh, old traditional Japanese guy kind of a character, at least initially. Feels very much like, um, I think it's Haposai from Rama One Half, so that kind of a concept for a character. And it's just ridiculous that these characters would all, you know, get in a plane and go off in search of a lost treasure together, or, you know, whatever. It's, it's ridiculous, but that is the, the overall tone of the show. So it's not bad ridiculous, it is just there, right? I should also mention the um, uh, the dialogue and how the different characters speak and, and behave differently. And this is one of the things that a lot of anime and a lot of media actually has a problem with, where all the characters will use essentially the same vocabulary. You know, they'll all kind of sound the same. Obviously different voice actors, but there's no difference in, in education, it appears. And one of the things I like is that Cutie generally talks with a somewhat more refined vocabulary, while the, the boyfriend is a little more practical, a little bit more streetwise. Um, and he's not talking like Huggy Bear, but he is definitely, he feels more like um, a man on the world, a man on the street who has to deal with regular everyday people all the time, as if it's a journalist. Uh, while the kid speaks very simply, has, has very simple dialogue, as would be typical of, of a... Of a a hyperactive preteen kid, while the father generally has more thoughtful dialogue, and he talks in you know, complete sentences and things like that. Now, he's again a ridiculous character, but he feels more aged than the other characters. So, you know, good job there. Um, I should at this point also mention the uh, the voices, because. I actually have a bit of a problem with the voices. Uh, Cutie Honey is is fine, her, her voice actor. And I should point out, I listened to this in the, with a Japanese dub. Uh, so she's pretty perfect, but the kid is kind of screechy. He has that that over-the-top kid, you know, thing where, Oh, Cutie, ah, kind of thing. 
which gets uh, hard to listen to at a time. Uh, and the boyfriend is often the victim of various pratfalls and things where his ego's being burst a lot. And so his vocal reactions to that are often just a little too over the top for my tastes. So, you know, you'll find a mixture of things in this particular dub. But um, beware. I'm not aware of an English uh, dub of the original Cutie Honey. So who knows? Uh... I'd like to talk about believability. That does not exist here. This is not a believable world. There, there's no attempt to make this believable. It is a ridiculous, over-the-top, silly concept, but held together with high action and ultimately a fun group of characters. Um, you know, the, the criminal organization they're working with is unbelievably absurd. And... <laughs> And I mean, it's a group of women who each have some special twist to them, meaning like they might be part cougar, not in that sense, um, or part bat, so they can fly. And each one is unique, so there's a, every episode has a boss. And they have all these weird powers. Each one has a unique weird power, while all of the other members of the organization are all identical android men. And when I say identical, it's literally the exact same character design for all of them. Same coloration on the outfits. All identical. This is clearly a budgetary concern. And it's just, it's ridiculous. But it allows them to do all this action. So what can you say? You know, that's just kind of the reality of this kind of, uh, of a situation. Also, I want to mention the music. Um, it's surprisingly effective. Very 70s. There's some bow chicka wow wow in there. Some kind of disco inspired things. But the action music does get your blood pumping, as it needs to. The opening theme is very fun and upbeat. And does a good job of capturing the tone of the series. Um, it is kind of over the top, but that is the show as well. While the ending is surprisingly poignant and downbeat, it's this very quiet, sort of romantic tune while you're panning across different versions of Honey. And for a, a ridiculous over-the-top series like this, I really appreciated that, that they threw in that different tone. Obviously, a lot of anime series will have a kind of a downbeat ending theme. But this goes whole hog with it, and I think that's a good way of kind of summarizing Cutie Honey, is that Cutie Honey embraces its ridiculous premise and its ridiculous characters and just goes for it and gives you, you know, amazing action sequences that don't really make logical sense in terms of why would you set up this giant environment just for this lair, it just doesn't, it, why? But it's a ridiculous action series from the 70s, so that's fine. I enjoyed Cutie Honey. I had a blast with it, but I knew what I was getting into. So hopefully this lets you know what you're getting into with Cutie Honey. Uh, it is a... Ooh. How many episodes is it? It's, it's, it is, I think, 26 episodes. Uh, no, it is more than that. It is... Yeah, I think it's 26 episodes, roughly. Like 24, 25, something like that. So be aware of that. Uh, again, it's a lot of fun. There, there are several other versions of Cutie Honey, which a lot of people like more than the original. Uh, some of them tone down different aspects or hype up other aspects, so be aware of that. But Cutie Honey is definitely an important anime series in the history of anime, and is worth checking out at some point if you're curious about how all that goes along. So, hope this is helpful, and I will see you next time.